Hi, my name is Grace Shalom Hopkins and welcome to another episode of Spin Weekly. This time in addition to my I got shot in the chest, not really bandage, I also have a burp cloth. Cause my baby. Yeah. Breastfeeding mothers. You know my feels. So it's it's getting glam around here. But aside from my glamorous hosting apparel, we are talking about our first breed study, which is Merino, ultra fine Merino, and Angora. Now I know, wop, 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 it's Merino. Whoa, bro. But Angora is incredibly worm. Incredibly worm. So you do want to blend it with something, but I wanted something that was really interesting and very soft, but wasn't going to like break my bank. Oh, now there's going go around my noise. Yeah, gonna blow it off. Good job, thank you. So in the Paradise Box, they sent me some ultra fine merino. Wow, oh my gosh. This is what I hate about fine fibers. <coughs> Full disclosure, I truly hate Angora and Alpaca and anything floaty. Silk, all those floaty fine fibers, people love them, I hate them. They make me want to hurt myself having them in my fiber stash. Cause they're so floaty, they get in your nose. So there's my number one observation on Angor is floaty gets in nose does not like. But I have many other observations to go with that. So I'm going to do something a little different. Same as last time I am, well, last time. I'm pre-filming, so maybe not last time. Same as the last video that I filmed. I am going to talk a little bit and then I'm, no. It's not going to be the same. Alright, so I'm going to do something a little different because you guys know I've been playing with the format of these episodes a little bit. So I'm going to tell you the history of... <laughs> yes. I'm going to tell you the history and my thoughts and feelings about this spin while I'm spinning it. So that way you guys can listen to something while you listen. So that way you guys can listen to some interesting facts and history while you watch me spin it because this is actually some of it right here. It is a bobbin of white fingering white singles. It Hashtag not, not that exciting. Uh, I believe I will actually do a real time spinning clip, which some of you guys have asked for, so you can see how I spin without it being sped up. So we are gonna jump into that. I'm also going to show and talk about some of the prep that I do and some of the issues that I encountered. <laughs> <laughs> prepping some fine fiber. So let's jump right into that and I will see you next time. Oh baby bean! What you doing with mama's camera? Yeah. All right, so before we get into the breed study portion, I wanna let you know what I'm doing. This is Paradise Fiber Ultra Fine Merino which I got in one of the Paradise boxes. I don't remember which one. Um, you can go in the links down below. I've made a playlist of the Paradise of the Month boxes, so you can check out and find out which one it is. Also, in a different month, I got some Angora, and Angora is incredibly, incredibly warm, and uh, many people say it's oppressively warm if spun by itself. And I didn't want to just spin a sample of my breed study. I wanted to actually implement it into a project. So I didn't feel like it was a good idea to like not mix it with something. And I feel like when you're working with a luxury fiber, a really simple cheap fiber like Merino is a good blending fiber. Now this Merino, I rarely meet Merino that I like. This one I loved. 
So anyway, what I'm doing is I'm just blending it on the hand cards. I feel like I have a lot more control of getting a consistent blend on the hand cards. So I just go ahead and do one or two passes on the hand card, generally two. And I would like to point out my hand card form is not super excellent. And um, fine fiber connoisseurs out there will note that I am butchering this fiber a little bit. But at the weight that I'm spinning for my On the Spice Market shawl, it didn't matter. So I once I get it into the Rolag form, I want to put it into a bat because I don't really like to spin Rolags. And I went through several methods on how to do this. I spread it out sideways and that worked pretty well you can see. But in the end, um, I didn't get any footage of this, but in the end I found the best was to break the Rolag into small chunks um, and then actually paint it onto the drum. That was by far the most effective way to get it on. All right, so now let's talk about the actual breeds that we're spinning here, starting with the Merino. This is Australian Merino, and uh, I did some research on Australian Merino, and I found that um, they're not just one particular homogenous breed. There are multiple strains of sheep genetics, which come together to make a uniquely Australian Merino, particularly... Um, its suitability for the Australian environment, which is really diverse. The Australians themselves classify their sheep usually as Pepin or non-Pepin. Um, this comes from the fact that they had the Pepin brothers in 1861 who bred a very particular type of Merino strain. Um, and that seems to be uh, both Spanish and French merino origin and there was this particular ram called emperor who was a french rambouillet and most people think that's so okay they have another pepin strain a uh, south australian merino which is fatter heavier longer and has really wrinkly skin and a much thicker coating of lanolin which protects them from adverse grazing um but the smallest of the merino types with the lowest weight of wool is the saxon merino and this guy is what i'm spinning now it is the softest micron fine bright white it's it's lovely so this modern day super fine merino was developed by crossing the spanish merino with a saxon and that's what gives it the super defined crimp and more complete body coverage. You can look at the lineage of these two breeds and see how they went together to create this ultra fine. Specifically, they have a U-shaped wave in their crimp and that are tighter together and uniform across the entire length. That's one of the things that they judge a good merino fleece off of. Okay, so that was a quick look at Australian Merino. There's so much more to learn, but let's talk about Angora now. Um, Angora rabbits, this is English Angora. They come in several colors and their coat is characterized by a small amount of guard hair in proportion to the actual wool. Um, so it has less haloing than other breeds of merino because of this factor. The rabbits were actually popular with French royalty in the mid 18th century and they spread across other parts of Europe by the end of the century. They first appeared in the United States in the 20th century um, and I wasn't able to find when they went from more pet to more fiber um, but right now they're mostly fiber bearing animals and or show rabbits. Okay, that being said, there are a lot of uh, ethical concerns about using Angora fiber because a lot of places, particularly in Asia, um, they don't keep the animals in good conditions. 
However, I do have a video about the angwar industry that I'll link down below. It's just a short, uh, it's like five or 10 minutes. And this woman says that she didn't encounter any of those adverse conditions. Um, though, without really going into it, it is common for Westerners to see only the best and exactly what they want to see. That's not, that's not unusual in any industry. So, um, when spinning with Angora, I definitely recommend knowing your breeder and being really familiar with how they keep their animals. Because even if you don't consider yourself an animal activist, it is really important to support industries that are ethical and sustainable across the board because where they're willing to exploit animals usually they're willing to exploit human beings okay so um the last thing i really want to talk about is how you harvest it um it's plucked sometimes it's shorn and combed but generally it's plucked and you do actually have to pluck the fiber or the rabbit can die under the weight and the heat of its own fibers because as i said before it is one of the warmest fibers known to man and it would be very oppressive to have a 100 percent angora garment unless you were maybe in the tundra so that's why it's blended um it's finer and softer than cashmere averaging at 11 microns in diameter um it is a very fantastic fiber. Um, we are coming up to the end here, but I did want to say that in World War II, they made garments from Angora for bomber pilots, which I thought was cool. So now you're looking at the finished yarn as I'm setting it, and you can see that it didn't fluff, but it stays very organic. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.